Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I read a story many years ago about a Lutheran pastor who was part of a missionary family in Papua New Guinea. And he relates the story about how the thunderstorms in that region of the world were absolutely treacherous, vicious, and something to be experienced. They were just off the Richter scale. The problem for him was, though, that he was terrified of thunderstorms, and particularly when these thunderstorms would come in the middle of the black at night. He was just trembling. He thought that they were out to get him. And he would always cry out, Mom, help me. I'm scared. Come and save me. And every time, <clears throat> excuse me, his mom would get up out of bed and she would go into his room and she would sit there on the bed and she would hug him and hold him and assure him that everything was okay. And every single time, he said, she would always say, don't worry. Don't be afraid. God is here with you to watch over you and protect you. And he tells how he remembers once turning to his mother and saying to her, I know God is here with me. It just would be nice if sometimes God would be here with me if God had skin on. Brothers and sisters in Christ, for those who are listening maybe for the first time, this Jesus Christ whom we worship and adore and glorify, he is our God with skin on. He is the one who came into this world from the glory of heaven to become one of us, to rescue us and save us, to live our life perfectly for us in our place and give us credit for it in his Father's book of credits, in his Father's book of life. But when he came here to be with us, he experienced trials and afflictions and scoffing and unbelief and beratement and ultimately, finally, death all for our benefit. He witnessed the pain of his people that he came here to save. The people who would not say that he was their own, who rejected him. But he saw that, that the, the pain and the guilt that, that caused his people pain. He saw the shame and the death that caused his people shame. But particularly in our gospel lesson for this morning, he witnesses firsthand the helplessness of a father whose only daughter is lying on her deathbed. The God with skin experienced every single weakness that human beings can experience except for the weakness of sin. This God with skin, I am here to tell you this morning, is the only God, is the only true God that can help you in every single one of your times of need. But it is also this God with skin on this morning who encourages you and invites you to do the very same thing that he invited Jairus to do. Don't be afraid. Just believe. It seems that Jairus took his time seeking out Jesus. Why the delay? Well, the scriptures don't tell us specifically why he put this off. But one reason that has been suggested is because Jairus was a synagogue ruler and he was probably trying to save his prestige and his status as a synagogue ruler because a synagogue ruler would also be considered a religious leader of, Jew, of Israel. And Jesus was the despised enemy of the religious leaders. But now this man has his back against the wall. He has no time left. His daughter is dying, and he desperately needs some help. So with tears in his eyes, and obviously faith in his heart that this Jesus can do something for him, maybe not knowing the whole plan of salvation, maybe not knowing how Jesus was bringing the kingdom of God, but he obviously believed that this Jesus could do something. With tears in his eyes, he drops to his knees and he pleads with Jesus to help as only a father can plead for his daughter. My little daughter, please. Come and put your hands on her so she will be healed and live. So, where do you fit in this story? At this point, so far, how does this apply to you? 
Are you too one that even though you know who Jesus is, you know what he has done, is he your last go-to of last resort? And if he is, why? <laughs> why make more pain for yourself? Do you, do you think that Jesus is just way too busy managing the universe, that he can't multitask everything, and then also take care of your seemingly small problem? It's just too small, and Jesus is too important and too busy. I, I'm not going to bring this to him and bother him with this. In, in the meantime, you worry, which is a passive-aggressive sin, you remember from last week, right? Do you, do you think that, that Jesus' arm is too short? and that he does not have the power to be able to help you in your troubles? Do you think that your sicknesses don't quite rank up? Do you think that your, your low cash flow, but your high pile of bills is, is too temporal, too carnal to ask him for help with? Do you think that your loneliness is something that is too petty? to be able to approach God and, and have his, get his help with for your life? No, not at all. Let me give you a little insight that came to me for the first time ever since, since translating this text for the last 28 years. You often hear the phrase, Jesus cares. That's true. But Catch this little overlooked detail, right? We hear this very short five-word phrase, so Jesus went with him. Now, who's the him? The him is the synagogue leader. And as a synagogue leader, as I said before, that makes him one of the Jewish religious leaders, right? Except Jesus is the despised enemy of the Jewish religious leaders. Now, it's obvious that Jairus has his back up against the wall, and he is desperate. But it's also obvious, it's a fact, that Jesus goes with him, a former professed enemy, in order to help him out. Jairus needed a God with skin on. The psalmist tells us, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Oh, Jesus cares all right. That's why Jesus went with Jairus. That's why Jesus went with him. Because this man needed his help. The back to life from death, Jesus said right before he ascended to heaven, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And now, as the exalted one, he is at the right hand of God. But he is still the God with skin on in heaven which means that he knows your every trouble. So ask him for some help. He sees every single one of your afflictions because he probably experienced them while he was here himself in the skin, with skin on. He understands and feels for you in times of sorrow. Writer to the Hebrews makes that very clear to us, that he understands what it is to be a human being. So why do you wait and make Jesus your last resort go-to? Call upon him in the day of trouble, and he will hear you, because you are his child. He put his name on you in those waters of baptism. You are his. He wants to give you aid. He wants to walk with you. He wants to walk with you in your troubles and your sorrows and afflictions the whole way through. But you do recognize, don't you, that just because you call upon him in the day of trouble, that does not necessarily mean that your time of testing, or as we called it last week, the circumstances that God allows you to be in, or you find yourself in, that does not mean that they are going to immediately come to an end. Have you ever noticed about afflictions or times of testing that as they're going along, they almost seem to kind of get a little bit worse and intensify before they're finally done. Yeah, and that's kind of what happened to Jairus here, too. Um, but what does he say to him? Don't be afraid. Just believe, Jairus. 
those words of encouragement are meant for us as well. So I want you to practice it right now inside your head. I want you to say those five little words to yourself inside your head right now. Say your name, skip, don't be afraid, just believe. You'll notice that there are some verses missing in our text. It's the account of um, a woman that uh, Jairus, Jesus is walking along with Jairus and they're heading to his home, but it's the account of a woman who wanted some healing from Jesus. Now, she's having an issue of blood situation, a female problem, and, and she doesn't mean to interrupt Jesus. She just wants to touch. She has so much faith in his healing power, she just wants to touch the hem of his gown. That's it, and she believes that that's going to fix her right up. But of course, this is, this is the divine son of God, right? Um, he knows that some power has just gone out from her. So he starts chatting it up with her. <laughs> Can you imagine what's going through the mind of frantic Jairus right about now? Come on, Jesus, let's go. <laughs> let's get going here, big guy. We got to get to my daughter. I want to be by her side. I want to bring you to her, her side. Now, big guy. Right now would be a good thing, but he stood there quietly because just about this moment, some people came from his home and they said to him, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? A parent's worst nightmare. Having your child die before you. Those words must have been like a stone in Jesus or in Jairus' heart. Why bother the teacher anymore? Can you imagine what he was thinking right about now? Why bother with anything anymore now? Why bother believing in this God now? This God who had the power to be able to prevent the death of my daughter? Why bother continuing to be the synagogue ruler? If being the synagogue ruler brought me a little bit closer to serving this great God, but it certainly didn't have any effect in saving my daughter one, one bit, why bother with anything anymore? So now I'm going to ask you again, where do you fit in this story, at this point now in the story? Those why bother comments? Words, those words have probably echoed around in your brain, in your heart, once or twice in your life, four or five times in your life. Why bother? Why bother? I have prayed and I have prayed and I have prayed that this thorn be taken from my flesh, just like the Apostle Paul. And never once did God ever reply to me directly, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in your weakness. But you have that word from God. It's, it's right there in the, in the word, right? It's preserved for you. You just need to open that Bible and read it. But you prayed and you prayed and you prayed, and you don't seem to be getting any answer. Well, God always answers prayer. Catechism class, we say it's a yes, it's a no, it's a maybe so. And that maybe so can mean maybe just not right now. But God always answers prayer. But Satan is going to whisper into your ear and go, tisk, 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 you poor little creature, you. Why in the world do you insist on continuing to pray to this Jesus? He has never once directly answered your prayer, and he's definitely not answering your prayer now. Why do you waste your time? Why bother anymore? Or perhaps you have prayed and prayed and prayed earnestly, more earnestly, more strongly yet for a loved one. And the outcome for that loved one was not as you prayed for. In fact, it was the exact opposite of what you prayed for. They didn't recover. They were called home. And you think to yourself, oh, why bother? Why bother going to church anymore? Worshiping a God that doesn't even listen to me. Why go to church anymore and listen to his word? Why bother? 
Why bother believing in anything anymore? I, I think I'm just going to go, it's, it's going to be all about me going forward. I mean, after all, what difference has any of this made in my life because my loved one is gone? Don't listen to the devil. Don't be afraid. Just believe. But believe what? When you have reached your absolutely darkest hour, I mean, it is so dark that spiritually speaking, you cannot see the hand in front of your face for the lack of light. When you absolutely cannot spiritually go one more step forward, when you have prayed and prayed and prayed and you just are not getting an answer you believe from God or you're not getting the answer that you want, when your sorrows are so deep and so strong that it feels like you will absolutely never smile again, when you think that things cannot get any worse, and they do continue to get worse, remember these words from our text today. Five little words. Emblazon them in your brain. Etch them on your hand. Don't be afraid. Just believe. But believe what? That Jesus will walk with you the entire way. That he is the God with skin on. And he has promised to never leave you or forsake you. Surely I will be with you always, he said. That's a promise to the very end of the age. So you allow Jesus to continue walking with you to the very end, because in the end, you will find that your faith is not disappointed. And now, Jesus would demonstrate for this man, Jairus, the synagogue ruler, as he has demonstrated in your life many times, or he will demonstrate in your life many times, this man whose faith has been stretched to the absolute breaking point, that Jesus is the God with skin on. In other words, he is the promised Messiah and Savior of all. He took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the little girl stood up and began to walk, walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. That completely astonished. That translation doesn't really do it justice here, the, the feeling that the parents of this little girl were, were feeling. The, the Greek actually says that they were ecstatic with ecstasy. That's a whole lot more than joy. That's joy on steroids. That's completely astonished on double steroids. Ecstatic with ecstasy is what they were feeling. Of course this is what they were feeling. Their only daughter was dead. And Jesus gave her life. Talitha kum. I tell you, little girl, get up. Ecstatic with ecstasy at what Jesus did for this religious leader of Israel, for this former enemy. Our God was skin on he proved his power over death. He raised Jairus' daughter back to the land of the living. He raised the son of Nain's son back to the land of living. He raised his friend Lazarus back to the land of living after three days in the tomb and he was decomposing. But the most important thing that this Jesus, this God-man with skin on did is that he raised himself from the dead. And his disciples saw it, and they saw him, and they touched him, and they walked with him, and they ate with him, and they spoke with him, this eternal God, this eternal God with skin on. So where do you fit in in this story? At this point now in the story, where you fit in is that one day you too are going to be ecstatic with ecstasy. You are going to be more than completely astonished. You are going to be more than joyful. You are going to be off the Richter scale because you too one day are going to be raised back to life if Jesus doesn't come back first. Maybe you'll be spared the experience of death. 
and just taken directly to heaven. <laughs> you will be able to see the resurrection of your loved ones and you, this is where you fit in as well, you will see all of your troubles and all of your vexations and all of your fears and anxieties and sicknesses and everything else that causes you problems in this life. It's going to just wash away. Where do you fit in and fit in in this story? By God's grace, through faith in Jesus as your Savior, you too are going to be able to experience the eternal joys of heaven with this God who has skin on. Jesus says to us this morning, and also, always, in our times of trouble and sorrow, don't be afraid, just believe. Say that again to yourself one more time. Say your first name. Don't be afraid. Just believe. May this hope that the Holy Spirit keeps alive in our heart, may this joy that he continues to cause to burn with ecstasy and an ecstatic ecstasy in our heart, may this faith that he has given to us to be able to believe these promises of this God who came with skin on to be our Savior, May these continue to be watered and fed and grow through your use and regular use of God's word and God's sacrament. For this we pray our Lord's blessings upon us this day. Don't be afraid. Just believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Your savior from sin, your gifter of eternal life. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.